right, boys and girls, I'm going to read you a story today called The Rebellion Against the Stomach. And <laughs> since we've been in, uh, in our house for so long, about all Dr. Claire and I've been doing is eating, so I think my stomach hurt this. The Rebellion Against the Stomach. Once a man had a dream in which his hands and feet and mouth and brain all began to rebel against his stomach. You good-for-nothing sluggard, the hand said. We work all day long, sawing and hammering and lifting and carrying. By evening, we're covered with blisters and scratches, and our joints ache, and we're covered with dirt. And meanwhile, you just sit there hogging all the food. We agree, said the feet. Think how sore we get walking back and forth all day long, and you just stuff yourself full. You greedy pig! You stuff so much that you're much heavier to carry about. That's right, whined the mouth. Where do you think all that food you get comes from? I'm the one who has to chew it all up. And as soon as I'm finished, you suck it all down for yourself. Do you think that's fair? Oh, what about me? Called the brain. Do you think it's easy being up here, having to think about where your next meal is going to come from, and all, and yet I get nothing from all my pains? And one by one, the parts of the body joined in the complaint against the stomach, which didn't have anything to say at all. I have an idea, said the brain. Let's all rebel against that lazy belly and stop working for it. Superb idea, all the other members and organs agreed. We'll teach you how important you are, you pig. Then maybe you'll do a little work of your own. So they all stopped working. The hands refused to do any lifting or carrying. The feet refused to walk. The mouth promised not to chew a single bite. And the brain swore it would not come up with an, any more bright ideas. At first, the stomach growled a bit, as it always did when it got hungry. But after a while, the stomach grew quiet. Then, to the dreaming man's surprise, he found he couldn't walk. He couldn't grasp anything in his hands. He could not even open his mouth. And suddenly, the man began to feel rather ill. The dream seemed to go on for several days. As each day passed, the man felt worse and worse. This rebellion against the stomach had not had better not last much longer, he thought, or I'm going to starve. Meanwhile, the hands and the feet, the mouth and the brain just lay there, getting weaker and weaker. At first, they roused themselves just enough to taunt the stomach every once in a while, but before long, they didn't even have the energy to do that. Finally, the man heard a faint voice coming from the direction of his feet. It could be that we were wrong, they were saying. We supposed that the stomach might have been working in his own way all along. I was just thinking the same thing, murmured the brain. It's true he's been getting all the food, but it seems that He's been sending most of it right back to us. Well, we might as well admit our error, the mouth said. The stomach has just as much, much work to do as the hands and the feet and the brain and the teeth. Then let's all get back to work, they cried together. And at that, the man woke up. Oh, to his relief, he felt he discovered his feet could walk again. His hands could grasp. His mouth could chew, and his brain could now think clearly. He began to feel much better. Well, there's a lesson for me, he thought, as he filled the stomach at breakfast. Either we all work together, or nothing works at all. Do you know that the Lord talks about that in 1 Corinthians? Listen to this. You've probably heard this before. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Verse 14. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, 
Is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were a hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now they are, they are, they are many members, yet one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of thee. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be feeble are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon those we bestow more abundant honor. And our uncomely uncom parts have abundant, more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need. But God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part with which lacked, that there should be no schism in the body or no separation or no division, but that the members should have the same care one for another. Whether one member suffer and all members suffer with it, or one member be honored, and all the members rejoice with it. If I have a toothache, my whole body hurts. Sometimes in the winter, my fingers crack and bleed. Oh, and it's just a little teeny cut. But my whole body, my thumb is throbbing, and my whole body rushes to my thumb. Or if I stub my toe... Oh, my eyes are feeling bad and my hands are grabbing for my toe. But I need all of my body. And all of my body needs to feel well. And all my body work together so that we can live. But then there's verse 27. God says, Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. So the Lord told this story about the eye and the ear and the, um, and the hand and the hearing. We need everybody. My body needs all of me to work together. And at church, my body needs all of me to work together. In the body of Christ, all of us are important. Sometimes you children at school, you encourage me with just your smile. Or you, you're, hi, Mrs. Auclair. We teachers do a secret pal. And sometimes the secret pal will put a candy bar in my box. And that cheers me up. We need each other. We need to all be apart and not complain about when one gets more glory. Oh, that hand got to shake somebody very special. But my eye didn't get to shake somebody special. No, I'm to rejoice for everybody. And when your stomach starts to complain and your hand is saying, oh, do I have to put something else in my mouth? Remember, we all work together. And I hope all of you at your home are working together and all of us at school work together. All of us in God's family pray for each other and lift each other up and all of us be glad for each other.